Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to look at our hydroponic systems and we're going to talk about maintenance. So what do we need to know looking after our hydroponic systems to ensure that we grow plants successfully? Uh, we have ours here. We've got ours in the large box, which is about 50 liters. You can also make this same hydroponic system in your small fish polystyrene box if you want. And in that you would just do four plants and that can be kind of cool if you want to do a smaller, more manageable system. But if you have got your setup, um, you probably still haven't added your hydroponic nutrient yet. Hydroponic nutrient always comes in part A and part B. Uh, and we mix them together in the hydroponic system. So we've got two different types here and they're both the same. We've got the liquid and the powder. So these are the perfect amount for one of these larger hydroponic systems. If you do a smaller one, um, check the notes for the correct measurements. But yeah, basically adding the nutrients to your tank is really easy. Just open the lid and pour both of the containers into the setup. So now we're going to talk about plant care. The plants are probably the most important part of your hydroponic system. It's the thing that you actually want to get out of the system, right? That you want to grow and enjoy and eat. So it's important that we look after the plants. Now you can pretty much do this in the same way that you would look after plants in the soil. If you've ever grown in that way before, it just requires a little bit of nurturing, things like pruning dead leaves, making sure looking out for infections, any kind of diseases and all that kind of stuff. The plants are going to be the best indicator of the health of your hydroponic system as well. Obviously they should be nice and vibrantly green, leaves should be standing up nice and straight like this, and by observing your plants and their health you can get an idea of the health of your hydroponic system. In terms of identifying any problems with your plants before they occur, you can remove these cuts from the system and check the roots once a week. Now this is one really cool thing about hydroponics is you can actually pull the roots out and have a look at them. And we want to check out the roots and observe for any signs of disease. These ones are looking pretty good. They're looking a little bit brown, but healthy roots are relatively white in color like this, and they are not gunky. If there's any slime or gunk building up on them, or they're kind of going a dark brown or a black color, um, you probably most definitely have a root disease issue or a root rot issue which is not good because unfortunately you can't really fix those if you have a root issue with your system you're going to have to start again unfortunately so issues with your roots would be caused by two things firstly diseases such as pythium and those are infections that make their way into the system you can avoid that by practicing good hygiene like we talked about in the what is hydroponics video but it can also come from things like a lack of aeration so that's why we have the air stone in there, which is pumping oxygen into the water. A lack of oxygen can mean that the roots start to rot, right? They're not getting enough air to breathe. Um, so it's important that we leave the air stone on 24 hours a day, and also that you check that the air stone is running just once a week. If you see bubbles, you're good as gold. Like our aquaponics, we're going to need to continually top up the hydroponics over the course of the lifespan of our plants. And that's because they're going to drink the water, right? The water level is going to go down. Um, the cool thing about hydroponics is we can actually just add tap water directly into the system. The chlorine isn't an issue because we don't have fish and bacteria in the system that we're worried about impacting. So you can add tap water directly into the system, which makes topping it up a lot easier. So I'm going to check on the water quality of my hydroponic system now by just getting a sample of the water in this glass and inspecting it. I'm gonna to look to see how clear the water is. It doesn't matter if it's slightly discolored, it's more about how clear it is. So if it's clear, that means that that's really good. There's not any bacteria uh, issues and things like that. However, if there is cloudiness in the water, even if it's like a white cloud, white cloud means that it's, there's a bacterial bloom in the tank, which is an ideal. And any kind of like brown or green cloud is a sign of algae. So I'm gonna check out my system now and we're gonna have a look and see how it's going. So I just put my fingers in the tank, which you shouldn't do. So that's looking pretty good. It's nice and clear. It's got a little blue tinge on it because of the nutrients. Uh, but yeah, look at that, it's nice and clear. That means that there's no bacteria or algae present in the tank at this point. I would wanna do this once a week um, just to make to check on it and see how my water quality is going. So we love our greens that we're growing, but unfortunately so do some other organisms. Some people might call them pests, other people might be a bit more nice and just call them insects. However, 
aphids and fungal gnats really like to hang out in our hydroponic systems and around our plants. Now this is just a part of farming, it happens in soil farming as well. Growing outside people encounter pests all the time and unfortunately growing inside is no different. So we have to keep it in mind and figure out how we can manage it in a natural, sustainable way. So the two main ones that you will be encountering with your hydroponics are first fungal gnats and secondly aphids. Now fungal gnats, uh, they don't, they like to buzz around the hydroponics and around your microgreens and your, and your fish tank as well. So these solutions can work for your fish tank or for your microgreens. Now it might appear that the fungal gnats actually, that are eating the greens, but in fact what they're eating is the fungus that grows as a result of uh, fungal infection in your plants. And that's what that can make microgreens fall over as well, is a little fungal infection. And the fungus gnats show up and they, they feed on the fungus. So one good way to prevent fungal gnats is to prevent fungus in the first place. You can use a 3% hydrogen peroxide mix and spray it onto your plants and your microgreens and that kills the fungus and deters the fun uh, fungal gnats from even showing up in the first place. If you already have fungal gnats around, they spread the fungus as they move, so you also need to eradicate them as well. And a really good way you can do that is making a trap out of, of apple cider vinegar and dish soap. The other pest that you're bound to encounter are aphids. Aphids are notorious for sticking around leafy green vegetables and you will find them hanging out on the bottom of our leaves. Now, unlike the fungal gnats, they actually do feed directly on the plants, so they will kill our plants if we don't uh, get to them. There are lots of different ways that people talk about dealing with aphids. Um, you can use things like neem oil and various sprays with mixes from like chili, capsicum and garlic, lemon juice diluted with water and spraying it on the plants. Now, we know that those solutions exist however it's up to you to decide if that's a solution that's going to work for you particularly if you're growing indoors and you may have children or pets so if you're going to use any kind of spray do your own research and figure out whether or not that's going to be a solution that will work for you one solution we can recommend though and this is can be used in all situations is sticky tape sticky tape can actually work really well to get rid of aphids it's not a preventative measure however it'll help you get the uh, aphids off the leaf very easily so what you're going to want to do Get a small bit of tape, wrap it around your finger like this with the sticky side on the outside and you make a little sheath for your finger and now you have the perfect little sticky finger to pick up all the aphids from the bottom of your plants. So let's find some, I'm sure we're bound to find some around here. Oh look, here we go. So there are some aphids on the back of this leaf here. I'm going to use this little bit of tape, just gently do this. And look at that, look at all those aphids. So if you're prepared to do this uh, semi-regularly, semi it's a really good way of, of getting the aphids off your plant. So, it's been six to eight weeks. You've successfully grown your produce to maturity and it's now time to harvest and enjoy them. You can harvest your produce one leaf at a time or you can harvest the entire thing in one go. Hope you enjoy your meal and taste really good. But now we need to clean our hydroponic system and reset it for the next grow cycle. It's important that we do this uh, after every grow cycle or if we encounter an issue with disease in order to make sure that the next grow cycle is going to have the best chance at growing. We're gonna need to take all of the water out of this reservoir when we clean it and replace it with new fresh water and new nutrients. So the first step is to scoop or siphon all the water out of the reservoir. Don't throw that away, you can definitely use it on your indoor plants or your garden, it's still got quite a lot of nutrient in it and your plants will love it. Then you're going to want to remove the liner and give that a really good rinse to get rid of any organic solids or algae. Then dry it. Give the net cups and the clay balls a good clean and also remove obviously any organic matter from the last plants. The polystyrene box, the liner and all the materials can then be sterilized using a sterilizing agent. This could be something like a weak hydrogen peroxide mix, mixture of about 3%. Uh, it could also be a strong saline mixture, so strong salt water, uh, or a weak ammonia mixture as well. Give everything a really good wipe down and then allow it to dry and use a fresh water rinse as well to get rid of any of the sterilant before you set up your system again. Make sure when you're putting the liner back in the tank that there isn't any water droplets or water residue caught between the outside of the liner and the inside of the polystyrene box. That water could become stagnant 
if caught there, it could be a place where harmful bacteria would fester and be introduced into your system. So make sure the outside of that liner is nice and dry and the inside of your polystyrene box is also nice and dry before you put the liner back in and fill it with new water. Once you've filled it with new water, you can then add your nutrients and get your seedlings that you've grown in soil or in the foam blocks and put them in the net cups and the clay balls and you're good to go. And as we've covered previously, with hydroponics, we need to maintain good hygiene to avoid introducing bad bugs into our system. You can check out our What is Aquaponics video where we go into this in more depth and how we can make sure that we stay spick and span, nice and clean, and keep the systems in the same way. Cool, so that about does it for this video with the hydroponic maintenance. Obviously, there's a lot more to this world, but this is a bit of a cursory introduction to some of the things, and you'll definitely learn as you grow. Um, you're probably going to make some mistakes. Hydroponics can be a little bit more finicky than aquaponics. The good thing about aquaponics, of course, being that it has that gut health, the bacteria that makes it so resilient. Hydroponics uh, is scalable as a technology, and yet it is also quite fragile. So don't be disheartened if you face issues with it, and we're here to help you with it as well. Happy growing.